clear back in the 1920s, I believe it, with Albert Einstein became coming up with some of his well-known theories. Um, and he was reaching beyond the normal Newtonian physics that we start to, that it, most students have, have been taught, you know, about physics. But it starts to reach beyond into other levels. Now, he didn't really father, if you will, quantum physics. But some of his original thinking started getting other people thinking along lines. And next thing you know, we have people that are starting to study atoms, which is the building blocks of all matter, in more and more detailed ways. We have electron microscopes and other equipment now that can actually see atoms and parts of atoms and parts and parts of atoms that Einstein couldn't see, he didn't have the equipment. Okay. And it begins to say, what is that we're looking at? Well, this sort of violates some beliefs that we've been carrying around for all these years. Let me, let me do some mathematics about some of these things. And the, some of these very high level stuff that uh, is beyond the capacity of most of us to understand the details of it. But the findings of it we can all understand. And the findings are very clear. When these scientists, these premier scientists, start studying the building blocks of all matter being atoms, all physical things, including you and me and anyone else who is made up of atoms, which is all of us, okay? Some striking things start to appear. And that is that at the atomic level, everything is connected. Very important. That's a very simple sentence, but everything is connected. There's no such thing as a group of atoms that could get together and go over there someplace and be different from a group of atoms over here. No, because that group and this group are all connected. It's all one big oneness soup. Okay, That's not what our senses tell us, obviously, but that is the physical reality of it. At the atomic level, everything is connected. When you look outside your window and you see a tree out there that appears to be different from you, ah, that's an illusion. You can't have a group of atoms that go out there and form a tree that's different from you. It can't be. What you're seeing is an illusion. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like we're in a dream. Okay, And this has been known to us for Decades upon decades is not new. It didn't happen just yesterday in somebody's new theory. It's been proven and reproven over and over and over again that everything is one, and therefore anything that appears to be separate has to be an illusion. Therefore, drum roll here, a little silence, the world is an illusion. Now, what I should probably do is sit here and wait for. 30 minutes or something, let that one sink in. The world is an illusion that so violates everything we think we understand, everything we think we believe, because our, we have a saying. I saw it with my own eyes. Seeing is believing. In other words, if you see it with your senses, it has to be real, it has to be true. If you hear it with your own ears, I heard it with my own ears. All of that says, my senses are the king of what is reality. When in fact, your senses are fooling you and fooling me big time. The world that we see is an illusion. So what we're doing with optimal EFT is we're taking the um, truest, most scientific approach available and we're, le we're, we're climbing towards that and leaving the other behind. Not that we don't have to pay attention to it because we have to make decisions while we're here. We have to stop at stop signs and one thing and another <laughs> and, and all of that. But we're getting more to the point where we're recognizing, ah, this experience of being in a separate body isn't really real. There's something wrong with it. And our scientists are telling us something's wrong with it. But the reality is, the world that we see is an illusion.